Hello guys and welcome back to another satisfactory guide. This time we're going to talk briefly about logistics, the difference between manifolds and load balancers, the types of input systems you can use such as sushi belts, ratio balancers and bus systems, as well as how to set up logistic floors for your factory. Now the reason for this is a lot of new players have been asking about the different terminologies and I hope that this will clear the air until I can create a comprehensive guide that goes into real depth about the different terminology and logistics in general in Satisfactory. So let's get into it. Now often you will hear people talking about load balancers and manifolds. Now a load balancer splits the input of resources evenly between several outputs, such as a Mark II line of 120 ore splitting evenly between four constructors. In comparison, we have a manifold. Now this is a series of splitters in a line that sequentially split resources between the smelter to its side and the splitter in front. Often people consider manifolds inefficient at splitting resources though, due to them prioritizing the first smelters in the sequence. Now with a 120 ore line, the first smelter is going to be receiving 60 resources rather than the 30 that it needs, with the other 60 heading to the next splitter, which then splits 30 resources to its splitter and 30 in the following one. This means that the last smelter in a line of manifolds is often slow to run efficiently. Here, 15 would be sent to the penultimate smelter and 15 in the last one, even though they both need 30. However, this doesn't mean that they're inefficient. It's slow to fully turn on. However, once the first smelter's buffer is full, bear in mind we are overfilling filling it, it will overflow the resources to the next splitter and so on until all but the last two smelters are filled with resources. And at this point, the last two smelters should evenly receive the required resources. This means that providing you are feeding the input line the right amount of resources for its production, both load balancers and manifolds will run efficiently. However, manifolds do require a slight warm up period initially. This can be cancelled through the priming of lines, which is just where you take a stack of resources and you place the, the required stack of resources in each of the machine's buffers before they turn on. This just means that they're skipping the filling of the buffer and so almost immediately the resources will follow on to the next part of the manifold. But if load balancers don't require that and they look great on a line because everything's running smoothly, why use a manifold? Well in short it comes down to speed and simplicity. It's much quicker to set up a manifold and often much more compact and much easier when you're dealing with some numbers. As such, the five minute warm up is a small price to pay. There are times though when it may be more important to use load balancing, for example, in a nuclear facility to avoid excess radiation from backed up lines or even early game solid biofuel layouts so that factories don't keep shutting down during the warm up period of their jennies. But regardless, both of these techniques are great techniques to use and are both umbrella terms for more specialized systems. For example, you have load balancers that split items equally across all outputs, but you can also use ratio balancers, which are more compact and split items in a ratio such as one to four, as you can see here. Manifolds also cover scaling overflow lines, which use smart splitters to overflow items only once all the buildables earlier in the manifold are full. This works great for factories that receive varies, varied amounts of resources, but it does have its own limited use cases in Satisfactory. We then have sushi lines, not to be confused with spaghetti. So spaghetti is a loose term for unorganized conveyor lines that cover your factory and resemble kind of a, a bowl of spaghetti. But don't worry, I will cover how you can organize your conveyors slightly better shortly. 
Sushi lines, however, are mixed belts. These are often found in storage overflow areas, but are also a great way to build compact factory lines, providing you build sync backups as a full output can cause the whole system to freeze up and we don't want that. Finally, there is the bus system. This is a more common system used in other games like Factorio that fill conveyor lines along a main bus, splitting resources to production buildings as required. Now this is perfectly viable in Satisfactory, although with each resource node in Satisfactory providing an unlimited amount of resources, limited only by your conveyor speed, this system is less necessary than in other games where you're having to constantly find new resource deposits to harvest and bring to your factory. We will no doubt be covering all of these systems in depth at a later date, but for now let's talk about factory floor logistics and why you want to use logistic floors. Now initially you will run factory logistics across the floor you're working on. This often means that we're going to be jumping or sliding over or under conveyor belts to get from point A to point B. And as your factory grows, the larger the sprawl of conveyors. This makes it important to use walkways and foundations to walk above the production. However, you can also set up logistic floors. Now these are floors under or above your production line, which house all the conveyor lines. This serves two purposes. Your factories will look naturally much cleaner, but you'll also be able to walk around your factories freely. And the great thing is these are also pretty easy to build. So first you need to place a logistics floor either directly above or below the production line. Now these can be any size, but I recommend six to eight meters in height for new players. That's one and a half to two large foundations in height, as this gives you ample space to place manifolds and run their outputs in line with the production floor they're feeding. You can see here we have a particularly tight logistics floor and I wouldn't recommend this for new players as it's quite easy to get confused as to what's going where. Now it can take a little bit of effort to set them up and get used to doing, but this means that your resources can be brought in from below. Now the easiest way I've found of doing this is actually with a logistic floor below the production floor. You can then purchase the floor holes from the awesome shop and place these directly at the input of each production build wall, so your smelters, your constructors, assemblers, and then connect an elevator between the floor hole and the input. We will then do the same underneath with the manifold, and this is a great way to see where your manifold, your, your splitters need to be placed. Once you've aligned the manifold with the floor holes, you can connect them with your elevators and you're ready to go. Now it will take a little bit of work getting used to, but it allows for great clean looking factory lines and removes any unneeded spaghetti. And of course it does help by planning a factory in advance, but for that you will need to check my next video, which I'll put in the top right hand corner here now. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Fireflesh, The Calamity, Ben and Star, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Shlom. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.